You guys have a lot of robots. Some way bigger than would fit in my Manhattan studio. <laughs> Hey, yeah, how are you doing? Hi. Good. <laughs> Can you tell me how you started off as a visual engineer? I went to school for still photography and I studied that and then I kind of got bored of that and I started taking classes just out of as a hobby in woodworking and metalworking and electronic circuits and just, you know, maker kind of things and playing with Arduinos and all this kind of stuff. The next challenge is the most exciting challenge to me. It's not the one I already did. I already got that done, so I can move on now. It's more, you know, what, what are we going to do next? And, and would you still describe yourself as a visual engineer or is it kind of transformed into something else? There's a lot of hats that, you know, I wear, but generally speaking, you know, the, the guts of what I do is still visual engineering in every way. What advice would you give any budding visual engineer or cinematographer? I would say play. 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 Just keep playing. I like that. You know, I could only do incredibly complex shoots fairly easily because we've done so many other shoots. You know, it's, it's a kind of a building knowledge base and even the devices we build too. It's like, oh, okay, now we did that with one catapult. Now we could do this thing on the end of the catapult that then does that, you know, and just you can start building on that knowledge. But unless you've done the first basic thing first and really understood how that worked or how that didn't work, which is a lot of the learning we're doing as well, um, I think you can't get to the end point. So I think as a budding visual engineer, I would say, to start playing with stuff and just doesn't matter what camera you have, doesn't matter what kind of lights you have, go outside and just put your phone on there and in slow motion mode or whatever and just start playing around to understand. So many people that message me are like, oh, I'm an engineering student. And I'm like, great, go to film school. You know, and people are like, I'm a film student. And I'm like, great, go to engineering school. You know, so it, it is, it's that chat, like how do you learn the other side? Um, some people have it built in. It's just kind of in their genes. They understand engineering type stuff. Um, some people really don't, and I say to those people, then just hire somebody that does. As much as I can build the things, I understand the technology, having other people that do it as well is incredibly useful in that they also bring their knowledge to the, the pool. You know, it's not just what I know and to be like, execute what I, I'm telling you. It's just like, this is our problem, this is how I think we should do it, and then they bring in their opinion as to how they think, and then we kind of mesh in the middle and land on the best end result, which is all you really want. Right. You've done many different ways of trying to shoot things, trying yeah. to shoot high speed. Sometimes people look at a shot and they go, you could have just moved the camera by <laughs> hand, right? Uh -huh. What do you say to that? <laughs> I say you could have. You might have been there all like for a week trying to get it right with the timing of everything else happening. Um, you know, I, that's the thing. They're, they're, we're not saying that the way that we do things is, is the only way to do things, but it's a very efficient way of doing things, which Nowadays, with the budgets being what they are and people being trying to get more content for social and TV and print and everything at the same time, um, it allows us to be way, way more efficient, you know, not sacrificing quality, but to get shot, shots done quicker. Right. You know? What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about camera robotics? Camera movement is actually usually the simplest in many ways part of the whole programming process. It's more for us syncing up what happens in front of the camera really accurately, that is the challenge. What do you say the bolt enables you to create more than you would otherwise? You know, we're always chasing the variation in a shot to try to get it perfect. You're always trying to eliminate all variation, which is usually eliminating humans is the first way to, to, to get rid of that. Control chaos is, is kind of what we do every day in that you have liquid and air and splashes and explosions and all these things that are happening in, you know, millisecond timelines and any variation in any of those things can make or break a shot, and which means that you might be on a shot for hours longer or you're done, you know? So uh, for us, the efficiency of everything being controlled, you hit one button and the whole thing just kind of takes place in front of you, really the best, the only way to actually do the work we do in, in a lot of ways. You know, I look at the, the number of, uh, you know, MoCo users concentrated in close proximity to each other, right. who all kind of work together and help each other, it's fantastic. Right. And and to see that community kind of really start growing, start yeah. growing is right. great. Yeah. yeah. With our work, it's like we were one of the first people to really share BTS, our behind the scenes, out with the world. Because also, just like flare operators, I guess, a lot of tabletop companies, directors, they would like lock, you know, you know, black door, everything. You can't see what we're doing. Um, it's the magic. You can't see the magic we're doing. Um, and that's what we kind of changed and the world has kind of followed in our footsteps around the world. Everyone's sharing behind the scenes and, you know, I think people realize like we all get hired for different reasons. Like we, we could be stronger as a kind of more open source community than we are as individual 
people. Right. Reminds me a bit of um, Penn and Teller. Uh huh. Yeah. You uh -huh. know, they they became well known because they showed everybody how they did their tricks. Uh huh. Right. You know, Right. You know, obviously, they have a particular style as well, but right. you know, they kind of in the UK they became well known because they they, they did shows here showing people right. behind the scenes. That's amazing. That was like you know, 15 years ago. Right, and they didn't go out of business. And they're they still, still doing no, just fine. Yeah, they're doing yeah. just fine. Yeah, exactly. they didn't crush the whole industry. Yeah. Tell me about the garage. Yes, yeah, so the garage is our uh, production company. It's more about a, a group of like-minded people that are, believe in innovation. Be, believe in making cool visuals and doing just really cool stuff right. um, and are willing to push the edges of, of what is possible. So Steve, you're here in the UK. Tell us why you're here in the UK. We're going to play tennis with robots. Wow. Yeah, so we're going to put this... Is this you versus the robots? Um, a robot on robot is how robot I prefer it, okay. yeah. Uh, it's kind of a video game, okay. almost. Uh, but basically we want to show how accurate the robots can be and the process of programming them so that they could actually volley a ball across the tennis court um, using these rackets instead of cameras on them. And I think it'll be good fun. Fantastic.